Matthew's account of the resurrection opens up with a couple of very courageous and defiant women. Some might even describe them as badass. But to get a full sense of the badassery of these women, we have to go back to the crucifixion. You see, crucifixion wasn't just a way to execute a person. It was an object lesson in submission to Roman authority. The victim would have been selected because they represented a threat to Rome. And after being beaten, they were paraded through the streets to their place of execution. The public display was meant to tempt family and friends to step forward to defend the victim. And of course, if anyone did step forward, they were also crucified. It was all meant to intimidate the supporters of the person being executed, to, to teach them a lesson, to show what would happen if they thought about getting out of line. It was meant to turn them into frightened, sniveling creatures, cowering in the face of the Roman Empire, and to continue the lesson. The corpses were typically left to rot on the crosses, unclaimed. But our Gospel tells us that Mary Magdalene was among some of Jesus' female followers that, that witnessed the crucifixion from a distance. And in this morning's account of the resurrection, we find Mary Magdalene and another Mary, possibly the mother of Jesus, making their way to the tomb that Joseph of Arimathea had generously provided for Jesus' burial. What brings them to the tomb, we might wonder. There's a stone in front of it, so they can't get to the corpse. Well, the text says in the previous chapter, when the stone was rolled in front of the door, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. I believe it was an act of defiance. By sitting opposite the tomb in the presence of the guards, it would have been an act of nonviolent resistance in the face of Roman authority. They would not be scared away. And I wouldn't be surprised if they defiantly showed up each day following that. And if that was the case, this morning's text opens up with their daily routine of civil disobedience as they make their way through the darkness to take their place opposite the tomb and gaze unflinchingly into the eyes of the guards that were stationed in front of the tomb. Even while the other disciples were tucked away, hiding from the Roman authorities, these two women refused to be intimidated. They were courageous, defiant, and faithful. Their faithfulness was rewarded first with the appearance of a dazzling angel giving them news of Jesus' resurrection, and then with the appearance of Jesus himself repeating the message of the angel and the and instructing them to go tell the rest of the disciples that he would meet them in Galilee. And the Gospel concludes by saying the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. But here's the interesting thing. Those who doubted were commissioned along with the rest of the disciples to go forth and teach others what Jesus had commanded. Not just the faithful women, and not just the disciples who had scattered like cockroaches when the light comes on, but now worship the risen Christ, but also the ones who doubted. You see, Easter was for everyone in every place at every time, and it still is. Try as we might, we can't restrict Easter or the risen Christ to how we think they should be. Despite our best efforts at putting Jesus in a box of our own making, he constantly surprises us by busting out of the box. And to this day, we try to shape and mold Easter to one of our own making, one that suits our sensibilities. 
We have crafted Easter into one that's filled with fun, laughter, and celebration. It has become associated with family gatherings around a table overflowing with more food than can possibly be eaten in one sit sitting. It's nothing if it's not a chorus filled sanctuary decked out with flowers, bright colors, and shouts of Alleluia. That may be how we are used to experiencing Easter. But if our gospel is any indicator, then this year's Easter, in which we are tucked away in our homes grieving those who have died and fearful of what the future may hold for us and our loved ones, this Easter is closer to the original Easter than most of us can ever remember experiencing. Easter happened in the pre-dawn darkness filled with grief and doubt, not in the midst of laughter and celebration. It didn't happen in the neat and well-worn traditions of family get-togethers. It happened while trying to navigate new rules where dead people are raised to new life. And rather than the tried and true Easter choirs and decorated sanctuaries, it happened in the uncertainty of dismantled stereotypes, one in which women were models of courage, bravery, and steadfast faithfulness while the men cowered in darkened rooms. In short, Easter happened where it was most needed. And friends, if there was ever a time when Easter was needed, it's today. As death, death tolls rise, we, we need to be reminded that death doesn't have the last word. And the risen Christ, triumphant and victorious, lives today in the hearts of all who look for him in the world. Easter is an experience that transforms the person from one trapped within their own tombs of despair and hopelessness into a new creation that explodes into the world with hope and compassion. Jesus himself appears to have been transformed through the Easter experience. Matthew's Gospel describes him throughout his life as teaching that the righteous and the unfaithful would be separated from each other and judged. In fact, half a dozen times Matthew records Jesus as describing a place where the doubters and unfaithful would experience weeping and gnashing of teeth. But having gone through his own Easter experience, Jesus came out the other side, not condemning the doubters among his disciples to the judgment he had taught about prior to his crucifixion, but instead including them along with the others to spread the word of the good news of the kingdom of God. Jesus appears to have been transformed in more ways than his physical body. His outlook was also transformed. An encounter with death often has that effect on people. And when we experience Easter, when we encounter the risen Christ, then we are transformed too. Easter is for everyone, in every place, at every time, and it always has been. If you think it needs to look a certain way, then think again, because there are no limitations to it. If you think it only happens once a year, you're wrong because an encounter with the Risen One happens in the most common and ordinary of circumstances each and every day. It's not restricted to a lily-decorated sanctuary or songs of Alleluia. The resurrection of Christ and the embodiment of Christ in each of us is something that's just too big to be confined to a single day and experienced in a single way. So let us live out the Easter message of transformed lives, whether it's in the privacy of our homes or in our daily encounters with other people. Let us embody the Spirit of Christ, whether we describe ourselves as faithful followers or disillusioned bystanders. Let our joy come from the hope 
that the Spirit of Christ is alive and well and active in the world, never to be entombed again. Amen.